So you've been going to the gym for a while now, training your butt off, eating correctly, chest is looking good, legs are looking thick, biceps are looking huge, all your weight's going up on your bench press, your squat, your deadlift. But when you take your shirt off and you flex in the mirror, you're realizing that your abs just don't look as defined as all the other muscles that you've been working on. And you wonder to yourself, why is this happening? I'm listening to all the gym bros on TikTok and Instagram that tell me abs are made in the kitchen. All I have to do is eat clean, be lean, and my abs are going to look great. Uh, and if I do heavy squats and heavy deadlifts and um, heavy bench press exercises that make me really have to brace my core, that's all I need to make my abs more visible and more blocky. And I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but you've been lied to. Uh, and this is something that I have to dispel quite a bit. These are myths that I've been having to dispel pretty much my entire career in fitness. And it's that if you want to see more visible and blocky abs, you have to do weighted ab exercises, just like any other muscle group in your body. And the myths around this is it's twofold. Number one, People were like, oh, you you know, abs show up when you're lean. Well, there's a reason why skinny dudes can see their abs because they can see all the muscle bellies, right? Like a skinny dude has ripped biceps. It's not big, but it's shredded. Same thing goes for the abs. Uh, eating is half the equation. If you want those abs to be more visible and more blocky as you get bigger and more, more well-formed, you have to train them harder, right? But this then leads into the second myth that if you start training your abs with weighted exercises, it's going to make your waist super big. That myth gets spread mostly by female influencers more than male influencers, but male influencers still spread it. Guys, if you start training your abs with weighted exercises and you're on a good routine, for 99% of you, it's going to make your waist smaller because it's getting stronger and tighter. The only things that are really going to make your waist bigger and wider, especially from the front, uh, number one is obviously getting fat, right? Increased body fat percentage. Uh, but the other thing that they don't like to tell you is that when you jump on gear, which of course makes your muscles bigger, uh, it can also make your internal organs bigger. And your internal organs only have so much room, and if they get bigger, they push out, and that can give you that distended belly look or that roid gut look, right? Even at a smaller level, you can still be, you know, an average looking dude on gear taking this stuff and it makes your waist bigger because things are growing. So, but if you're natural, you get nothing to worry about. So let's jump into today's video. And of course, if you like this content, make sure you go down, click that like button uh, and subscribe for more videos. Now, this video actually came up because I send out articles two to three times a week with straight up fitness tips, free fitness tips. So you guys can go to the gym, do better workouts and stay focused. And if you're not signed up for my email list, go to my website, musculostrength.com. Totally free. Enter your email here, and you'll start getting email. This. Now, this email leads to this article on my website, which talks about the only two workouts you need to build a six-pack. This was actually one of my favorite series that I made back in 2019. Uh, and if you click this link right here at the top, It'll actually bring you to the video on YouTube. And on YouTube, this is actually the link where it has the entire playlist on the right-hand side. So as you can see, legs, the other only two exercises you need. Yeah, I had to do two for legs. Uh, forearms, traps, glutes, shoulders, biceps, triceps, back, chest, right? And every single one of these videos in the info section also has an article like the one we're going to go over today. So a lot of great information for you guys to jump into. And the reason why I do article versions of the videos is because a lot of times you might have seen the video before. Maybe you need a refresher course. And instead of having to watch it and find the exact points where I go over specific information, you can just scan through the article and get everything you need in like a minute or two, right? So what does the article talk about generally? And I'm just going to do a general overview is that when you're training your abs, specifically putting your workouts together, you want to make sure you're hitting a few different movement patterns, okay? You want to do exercises that have spinal extension and spinal flexion, right? That's how you properly train your rectus abdominis, your rectus abdominis being, you know, your six-pack, right? Your upper abs and your lower abs. No matter what exercise you do in the gym, as long as you're crunching, you're working the entire rectus abdominis, but there are exercises 
that do place more emphasis on the upper abs, the upper portion, which is in green, and there are exercises that place more emphasis on the lower portion or the part that's in yellow right here. And then of course, you wanna make sure you have exercises that include torso rotation to hit the obliques. You also wanna make sure you're hitting the obliques by making your spine bend side to side by doing something like a standing oblique crunch, which is this exercise right here. So like this exercise is hitting your obliques, it's doing more of a spine bend, and then torso rotation would be a wood chopper, okay? And we go over all of that in this breakdown. Now, getting back to the beginning, I was a little bit ahead of myself. I'm gonna show you how to wrap all of these exercises into two different routines. When you're doing an exercise like an ab pull down, okay, the reason why I make this my number one exercise is because with the ab pull down, you can do a ton of weight and you can place a lot of emphasis on your upper abs. Anytime you do an exercise for your abs where your lower body is stationary for the most part and your upper body is going up and down, you're placing more emphasis on the upper abs. So this green part right here. And then in this video, of course, I go over proper form for all of the exercises. So if you have a hard time with the ab pull down, which a lot of people do, you can watch the video, that's why it's here, and see it you know, happening in real time versus just looking at photos. A lot of people when they do the ab pull down, they don't really go into flexion and extension. Their upper body stays straight and just kind of goes up and down like this. No, you have, to, you have to bend, you have to get those elbows down into your knees. So exercise one, ab pull down, go as heavy as you can, target those upper abs. Number two is the wood chopper. This is torso rotation. And of course, when you do the wood chopper for the obliques, you're doing both sides, right? So if you were doing 12 repetitions, you would do 12 reps on this side, and then you would rotate your body and then hit the other side. And there's also a few different options you can do with the wood chopper if you wanna target your obliques a different way. You know, maybe you're doing the same workout week to week, you can bring the cables up and do the rotation that way as well. We're still hitting all the obliques. Exercise three is a leg lift. Now on the leg lift, this places a bit more emphasis on the lower abs. You're still training the entire rectus abdominis, but we're hitting more of the lower abs with all of the repetitions, which that image went away because I refreshed, so let me bring it back. The yellow part right here. Now. Some of you guys might see this image and be thinking to yourself, I can't hang and do a leg lift like this. I don't have the upper body strength or the ab strength to do a lot of repetitions this way. That's okay. A leg lift is literally just using something like a captain's chair and then bringing your knees up to your chest just like that. Now, for an exercise like this on the captain's chair, a lot of people stop with their knees like right here where this handle is. That's wrong. You're going to hit more hip flexors than abs. Whenever you do a leg lift, whether you're doing it on a captain's chair or you're hanging like this, those knees have got to hit your chest in order to properly activate your lower abs. And if a, a bell and alarm is going off in your brain right now because you've been wondering why you've been doing this exercise and not feeling it in your abs, go to the gym today, try it this way, hit your chest with your knees, and you'll see a change immediately. Um, another exercise that you guys want to do that's a bit different, hits your obliques in a different way, uh, is a windshield wiper. So when you do the torso rotation, you're hitting your obliques by rotating your upper body. Uh, the floor wiper, this hits your obliques by rotating your lower body, right? So you're still hitting your obliques, but you're hitting them in a bit different way. Because remember, the obliques go all the way up and down your side right here in the purple. So we want to do hit the same we want to hit the same body part on different days but we want to do it in different ways just to make sure that we're hitting everything and we're getting nice and strong throughout the entire core. Um, if you have the strength, you can also do a hanging windshield wiper, which is a lot of fun, it's hard to do. Uh, it's a bit advanced, but I know a lot of you guys will get to that point, so that's why I put it in the video and in the article. And then the last exercise, which is one of my favorite exercises to do for targeting obliques, is a standing oblique crunch. Now, with this exercise, you do not want to hold a dumbbell or a plate in each hand, okay? You want to do it one at a time because it kind of, if you're holding weights in each hand, you're offsetting the weight as you rotate side to side. What you want to do is you want to dip down as far as you can and then rotate over to the side 
because even though I'm holding the weight in my left hand here, I'm actually training my obliques on the right side when I do the movement the most. I mean, of course, both sides are getting activated, but the reason why you switch hands is because I'm going to be focusing on flexing the right side of my body as I perform the reps um, in order to really target the area. And then if you don't want to do it standing or don't have the strength, you can do a floor oblique crunch, which is demonstrated down here in this photo. And again, all of these exercises are demonstrated and talked about in the video at the top here. Um, and then as far as putting together your routine, it's just two workouts a week, guys. You can do these workouts before you start your normal training. You can do them at the end of your normal training, or you can even do it on its own standalone day with cardio. Just make sure you get both done each week and you will see results. Most people save their ab exercises for the end of their workout and then either don't do it or they half-ass it. They phone it in, they don't go heavy, they don't finish all their sets, all their reps, and that's it, okay? So workout one, six sets, 12 repetitions of ab pull-down. We're gonna hit your abs as hot as we can. And you might be thinking, like, why are we doing six sets? Well, a lot of you are used to, like, doing three sets of seven different exercises, just stay on one exercise that works that you know you're going to see results from and do more sets there, right? It's like people that go to the gym and they do three sets of bench press and then they go to the cable machine and do like 12 sets of different variations of cable flies. It's like, bro, just stay on the bench press and do eight sets because you're going to get way more gains from that than doing a cable fly, right? That's another video. So workout one, ab pull down, six sets, 12 reps. Uh, second exercise, standing oblique crunch. Four sets, 12 reps each side. So I'm doing uh, a little bit of rectus abdominis with more emphasis on my upper abs with the ab pull down. And then I'm working my obliques with the standing oblique crunch, which is this exercise right here, right? Workout two, leg lift. Okay, so now I'm working the rectus abdominis again with more emphasis on the lower abs. Six sets, 12 repetitions, followed up by a wood chopper, three sets, 12 reps per side. Remember, when you do the wood chopper, you have to do each side, so you would rotate your body around uh, and go side to side from the other way. And then the last exercise is a lying windshield wiper, three sets, 12 reps per side, which is this exercise right here, where you're rotating your feet side to side. So basically from one side of the barbell to the other. Now, for the floor windshield wiper, it's a really great exercise, but if your upper body strength isn't that great, you just got to find a place where you can brace your upper body, right? The only reason why I'm doing this exercise holding a barbell is because it's the easiest way to brace your upper body and keep your, and use the, you use the weight of the barbell to basically pin your shoulders to the floor as you rotate your legs from side to side here, right? Um, but you can go to like to a squat rack or a bench and you can hold on to that as well if that's easier for you. Um, I just like using the barbell because it's kind of like um, a static hold on the upper body and the pump feels great in your arms and chest, even though you're training abs. And that's it, guys. Twice a week, training your abs, hitting them pretty hard. And if you start doing a routine like this, I guarantee after six to eight weeks, you will see a visible difference in your abs and what they look like. And of course, if you wanna take all of your training to the next level and not just your ab workouts, when you sign up for my email list, sign up for a free account. You can try all of my 12 week programs for free. Every program comes with a video that explains proper technique for all of the exercises in the workouts. There's also PDF downloads that you can print that have photos and descriptions of all of the exercises so you can follow week to week or Maybe you just want to switch things up, you know, and try something new for one of your workouts. I have 15, 1600 videos on YouTube. All of those videos, including my exercise demonstrations, are cataloged on my website. So you can literally click chest, hit filter by body part, and all my videos pop up, all my workouts, everything you need to know to take your training to the next level. So, hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you next time.